Hey there guys and welcome back to Unjaded Jade. A-level biology, here we are. Okay, so if you don't know who I am, hi, my name is Jade. Um, I'm on a gap year right now, but I just finished my A-levels last year. I did maths, biology, chemistry and English lit to AS. Somehow I did manage to come out of A-levels with three A stars. Yes. Um, so yeah, I just wanna help you in some way and just kind of give you some advice of what helped me in my revision, how I handled all the content of A-level biology, just hopefully to make you feel less stressed, give you some inspiration because I fully appreciate how stressful A-levels are and especially biology. I know is like such an issue subject for a lot of people. So yeah, I hope this helps. And if you don't know what A-levels are, they are our like highest exams in the UK, like the last final exams you do in like high school, secondary school, sixth form. And I personally did the exam board AQA, but I feel like the tips are relevant to all the specs. Speaking of specs, the first tip that I would give you is to print off the specification because there's a lot of content in A Love Biology, there's a lot. And it's quite useful to go onto the example that you're doing and just print off the official specification of everything that you're meant to know. They split it into like chapters, put it on a yellow sheet just to never lose it because it's important. I had a little tick box thing and I would just go through everything in the specification and tick it if I'm like, yeah, pretty sound on that. Or I would do kind of like a red, amber, green type thing for what do I need to go over most, which things are like my real problem areas. And I think having the specification printed and then also having an idea of what you struggle with most in the specification just allows you to plan your revision more effectively, know what you need to spend more time on, which things you can just brush over. Also, it came to like Easter and I can remember going through the specification and being like, wait, we had to know that? Like, when did we ever get taught this one line on the specification? And then you can go hit up your teacher and be like, yo, I don't know what this means, teach me. Okay, number two is the actual revision techniques you use to learn the content. And there is a lot of content, so you need some good techniques. <laughs> I personally employed a few techniques flashcards being one of them. Um, every chapter I would have my flashcards. Because there's so much content, you have to try and focus on summarizing and condensing the information to the core of what you really need. And also write it with the specificity of what the mark scheme wants, which you can often get through doing past paper questions or like end of chapter questions in the textbook. I always like to put a lot of diagrams in, try and have as few words on a page as possible. Like there's no point just rewriting your class notes. You've got to summarize. Little conceptual diagrams can really help for understanding. I'd also write questions and then the answer on the back to like actively test myself. And then another technique I find so useful, and if you've been watching some of my videos, you probably have heard of it before, but that is blurting. Kind of a weird name, not gonna lie, but it is the most useful technique. The idea of it's quite simple. You take a chapter from A-level biology, you write yourself some prompts from the chapter, and then you get a blank piece of paper, or some scrap paper, and you write down absolutely everything everything you can remember from the chapter or like all the processes, using the prompts if you need them. And that just really quickly shows you what you do and you don't know. It's one thing to read something from a textbook and be like, yeah, I understand that. But it's a completely other thing to verbally explain that or to write that down just from your brain. Like it's one thing to understand, another thing to just you know, be able to regurgitate it. Unfortunately, biology at A-level is a lot of a memory game. So I find blurting is really useful to make sure that you're wording things right, to see if you actually remember stuff, to be able to draw diagrams from memory, etc. And then you can compare your blurt to your textbook or your class notes and write down whatever you didn't get in a different color. I also use the technique of object association for some of the processes or things, like longer things that I just struggled to remember. I have a whole video on that, so I'll link it down below. I also did weird, drawing diagram association things to remember processes like respiration and photosynthesis, which can be a bit more difficult to remember, um, but I'll link that below. Number three is online videos. When I was doing biology, because it was new spec and I was kind of one of the first years, there were not many resources online. And I remember I started watching some of the tailored shooters videos on YouTube for the free ones, but I know that you can purchase online, like the course. It's pretty expensive, not gonna lie. For me, I kind of thought, that my knowledge was sound enough not to need to purchase it. But I know that if you 
learn mostly from videos. I think it can be quite useful as a top up. One of my old biology teachers has also just started a YouTube channel. So I will link her channel down below, but um, she, she was such a good teacher at my school. I know she would also love advice on her content or like specific requests of videos, like to explain stuff more. And that is a free resource. So hit up that link if you want more help. Number four, and this is probably the most crucial thing that you're gonna learn from this video. And that is, do past paper questions and do them religiously and do them again and go back and analyze past papers that you've done. Analyze your end of chapter tests, do more questions, whether it's your current spec or the old spec, do them all. <laughs> My biology teacher was a bay and sectioned off all the past paper questions into chapters. So I could be like, oh, let's go to chapter seven. And then she would have collated a load of questions that I could do from chapter seven. But you can also look in the textbook at the end of the chapter and do some questions there. Don't just do the questions either. You need to analyze why you lost the marks, um, whether it's an understanding issue or a specificity issue. I always analyse my past papers with marks, so M for maths, A for application, R for read the question, C for communication, so it's like I understood the question, I just didn't communicate my thoughts very well. K was for knowledge because I just didn't know it, and S is for statements, so say it's like a two mark question but I only really wrote one point, and then I would tally that up and very quickly see why I'm losing most of the marks. And if you've done a past paper, go back and do it again until you're getting most things right. And something so important is to reword the mark scheme into your flashcards and into your notes so that you're learning the mark scheme way of explaining explaining something. Number five is specific, I think, to the AQA um, spec, and that is essay practice. At the end of paper three, you have to write an essay on a random topic or statement that they give you, and it's worth like 25 marks, which is a quite a big percentage of your A-level grade. The secret to this is to get your teacher to give you random topics and just write essays and get your teacher to mark them again and again and do it timed and just practice. Practice planning an essay in like five minutes and make sure that your essays are not just depth but also breadth of the specification. So try and use an example from like an organismal example and then more of like a microbiology kind of example, a cellular, like a biochemical example and then link it to plants and then just try and show that like, ah, I know most of the spec. <laughs> Another tip is to constantly reword the question or the statement that you're given into your essay. One of the most common issues people have with the essay is going off topic or just blurting down all the knowledge that you have from a chapter as opposed to linking it directly to the question that you've been set. Constantly reword that question. I really recommend this book. AQA Biology Synoptic Essays for the New Exam Starting 2016 by Dr. A.L. Walters. It basically gives you examples of really good essays, really bad essays, loads of example essay topics so that you can just practice. It gives you advice of what to do, what not to do, and it also has some extra to spec knowledge. Like I just, I think it's useful to give it a read. If you're aiming for an A star or to get like top, top marks, especially in the essay, then you've kind of got to look to include a bit of extra to spec knowledge. So I really recommend subscribing to the Biological Sciences Review. Um, this is super useful because it's aimed at like A-level students. So it's a good way to practice the knowledge that you already have and to pick up anything that interests you that you could potentially work into the essay. And now for some general tips. Biology is hard, not because the content is necessarily hard, but because the mark scheme is a biatch. The mark scheme is evil, like it's evil, it's so specific. Even if you've written something that is kind of correct or pretty logical, like if you've not used the words they want, they won't accept it. So be specific, do loads of questions and learn how the mark scheme wants you to portray like an explanation of something. Pay attention to the keyword of the question. Is it explain or is it describe? Is it compare? Like if it's compare, then you need to mention both of the things you're comparing and like what's different because this has this and this has this. If it's an explanation, then don't just describe something. There's a lot of content. And even if you feel like you understand something from like chapter one or chapter two, you You've got to consolidate it all the time, which is boring, but necessary. You really need information to be in, no in your long-term memory to aid you in further chapters. Application is also so difficult in A-level biology. So when you're tackling a question, underline all the keywords from the question. And then before you answer it, think to yourself, 
which bit of the specification is this question testing me on? Like, oh my God, wait, this question is actually about proteins. Like, wait, what do I know about proteins? What do I know about the structure of proteins? Like really just try and link it back to a specific bit of the specification and it'll help guide the way that you're answering it. And because practicals are such a huge element of questions as well, I really recommend the AQA Practical Biology book just to go over practicals, especially for paper three and there's questions on every practical. And another tip is last minute before the exam, um, have a sheet of paper with any random things that for whatever reason you just always forget. Wordings from mark schemes that you need to remember, equations, definitions, etc. Really don't try and cram absolutely everything from the biology content on the day of the exam. It's going to stress you out more, but you can just refer to that piece of paper, calmly go over everything again and ace it. Despite the fact I love biology, that was the most horrendous exam I ever did was biology paper one and I came out and I cried and yes, my crying video ended up on BBC News. So yeah, like if you find it hard, I found it bloody hard. So you're not the only one. I'm wishing you all the luck. I know it's hard, but please believe in yourself. Keep going, keep going over that content. Biology's tough, but you're tougher. If you found this useful, please, please tell me. It took me a while to collate everything for this. Yeah, have a lovely day. Bye.